Joining us right now from the Fox Business Channel is Stuart Varney. Stuart, I know you know Crystal Wright. I know Crystal Wright <laughs> very well indeed. I'm a huge admirer, and I'm, a, I'm really happy to be working with her this morning. You, however, Larry, are a different story. Um, Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for welcome, that support. Crystal. I love you, too. Now, Larry, you're sounding awfully smug this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Why. I'm not smug at all. Yes, you I... are. You're sounding full of yourself. <laughs> Thank all you, right. Stuart. I've... I need some help here. Uh, yeah, pl- yeah, look, uh, I've seen the Forbes article, which suggests that D.C. is a more cool city oh, yes. than New York City. Absolutely. In fact, Washington, D.C. has uh, been listed by as the, the coolest city in Washington. So take that uh, up there in Gotham. When, <laughs> since when has D.C., the city of northern charm and southern efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. So is, that beltway. Is there, right. Tell me, up there in New York, uh, Stuart Varney, is there a lot of gnashing of teeth going on up there? As uh, you know, uh, p- part of the reason uh, may be because of uh, uh, all the tour buses that uh, continue That's to right. clog up traffic there, as your colleague Chef Smith lamented the other day. Yeah. Well, actually, you got me on that one. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, Look, that being said, I mean, no, seriously, I mean, when Forbes does this list of coolest cities, it actually, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why uh, D.C. is starting to get high rated, but a lot of it has to do with the economy here. Yes. Um, and it is a booming economy, uh, one of the rarest places in America where there just doesn't seem to be a, a let up. Uh, is that sustainable, though, because so much of it is coming from the uh, federal, federal government? government. Yeah. You won't be so cool when we have a change in administration in January exactly. of 2017. We'll fix that. That's right. <laughs> Is there anything else you wish to talk to me about? No, I've you've already. Upset. I have been humbled. Crystal, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, I'm kind of surprised by this though, and I, I would not say um, for me that DC is cooler than New York City. There's nothing like um, Gotham, the Big Apple. Um, yeah. But I do think that it's a it's livable. I mean, it's the federal government, stupid, right? I mean, it, you've got jobs galore here, and the city is catering to young people. Every time I drive around. You know, near Fox News Channel, the D.C. Bureau here, there's a new apartment building or condo building coming up out of the ground. Metro is expanding. I mean, that's a lot. Well, Don't look, you think, I, Stuart? I, I've recently been spending a lot more time in the city itself, New York mm-hmm. City. And it is truly vibrant. Right. It's a very young city. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you, you just get this level of excitement in the air, which I've not found elsewhere in America, quite frankly. Right. Maybe Boston. Uh, but New York City seems to have it, right. and it's got that rhythm. It's got that life. It's got that excitement. Um, it's got the drive. Blah, blah, blah. No, he's blah. I think it's a very well-run city. Don't tell me. It's the no, city it's that true. never sleeps. Don't but tell it, me. If you make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> no, no, what what no. other New York cliches can we throw out no, there? No, but sh- look, th- Stuart is right. <laughs> you go. You just get out of a cab or the subway in New York, and it's just an energy there I, I, that you can't capture anywhere, New, and it is based on youth. I mean, New York is a Broadway. Great, New York is a great city. Everything I lo- about I, it. I love Washington. Stuart Varney is our guest, host of uh, Varney and Company. And by the way, I watch Varney and Company, and because of that, I know, Stuart, that you, first of all, you wax poetic about uh, how much you love being an American citizen and the process that you went through to become a legal U.S. citizen and a legal immigrant to this nation. Yep. And, uh, and because of that, and because of your unique moral high ground, frankly, uh, that you went through that process legally, uh, you are so adamant about this threat that the president has made about granting blanket amnesty and work permits to upwards to 5 million people, unilaterally, without the uh, benefit of Congress chiming in, to 5 million people who are here illegally. Uh, th- how is this a positive for our economy to just grant work permits to all of these people? Well, it, it's not. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, so I don't know whether this is <laughs> legit or not. What I do know is that the president's action on this particular issue is totally, I think, totally political. It comes three months before a crucial election. Mm -hmm. I think the president is trying to shore up his Hispanic base. Uh, Hispanic voters will be swing voters in some crucial states when it comes to control of the Senate. The president knows that, and I think he's using his pen and his phone to shore up that base. I think this is an entirely political thing. But but, but I've got to say, on the other side of the coin... I think it is a good idea somehow, I think legitimately, to get the 11 million illegals that are already here documented. 
I mean, we can't go on. We're not going to deport these people. Right. I think we should normalize them in some way, offer a path to citizenship, which is good for the economy and good for our culture. This is who we are. And I think that's a good thing. But yep. not with the stroke of a pen for purely political reasons right before an election. But, but Stuart, you did it the right way, right? You went through yes, a, pr- a long process to gain U.S. citizenship. Don't you think fundamentally, and I agree with you, we can't just, you know, en masse deport 11 million, and some people say up to 20 million is real, the no, real but, number. But we could but, start with the ones in jail, well, though. Well, we can, but, we? but I mean, so what, what would that look like? I mean, it's not, and I think that's, we can hash it out, but it should be a laborious process. I think the job number one is secure the border. Right. Then you can talk about normalizing the situation of those people who are here illegally. Then you can sort out the legit from the not legit. Right. But job one surely is secure the border. Right. And that's what the president refuses to do. Yeah. He yeah, could have done that with the stroke of a pen. He could have set the yeah, but he's not he do that. Set the military. He could have <laughs> done that, but he doesn't do that. Because that's not votes. He's putting out the welcome mat for future Democrat voters. That's right. what he's doing. Right. No, uh, you're right. Stuart Varney, the city is just sort of uh, uh, recovering now from this African Leaders Summit. Have you been uh, focusing on this at all, uh, on, on Varney and company, and uh, is this a good place for American businesses to invest over in this uh, really volatile continent? It's a good place for, uh, for businesses to invest because it is expanding rapidly. I mean, I, I saw some numbers the other day. The gross product of, of the Af- Africa as a continent, its economy has doubled in size in a relatively short period of time. I think it's like, like 20 years, something like that. Now, that's a growth rate to envy. If you could stabilize the politics in various right. countries, and they have in various countries, it is indeed a great place to invest. Mm-hmm. South Africa, Botswana, um, they come to mind. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a place which American business should be focusing on. Right now, it's Chinese business that is focusing on Africa. Yeah. They're the ones who have built out the infrastructure there and, and, and encouraged this economic growth. I wouldn't want to see America left behind in this because we've got a lot to offer. Uh, by the way, Stuart, I, you, you don't, probably don't know this because I doubt you uh, keep the computer on and stream us online after you do your uh, uh, daily hits with us. You have a job to do. But uh, there are a couple of sound bites you've given us over the, uh, the last years that we use often. Here, here's one of them. Brian, you are so smart. God Unbelievable. Okay. And, of course, we, we often use this one. Larry, there are very few people who have been so consistently right as you. Uh, but now I guess we're going to have have to add to the catalog. I know Crystal Wright <laughs> very well indeed. I'm a huge <laughs> admirer, and I'm, a, I'm really happy to be working with her this morning. You, however, Larry, are a different story. Yeah, so thanks for that, Stuart. Yay. I guess Thank my you, time's Stuart. up. <laughs> Great to have you as always, sir. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Seven... I know Crystal Wright very well yeah, indeed. Yeah, I'm yeah. a huge admirer, oh, and I'm, a, I'm really happy to be working with her this morning. You, however, Larry, yeah. are a different story. And, and Crystal Wright has a new ringtone.